How exactly do solid lubricants lubricate? This might seem trivial, but when you think about it, there are three different states of matter. You've got solids, liquids, as well as gases. Now, we kind of understand this at like a primary school level, right? That there's three different forms of matter. Now, there's actually a couple of different forms. Plasma would be a good example where we energize gas so much that the electrons actually split from the middle of the nucleus. But fundamentally, we think about things as solid liquids and gases. And in many respects, you can describe lubricants in that way, right? We have gaseous lubricants, so there are such things as air bearings, liquid lubricants, which we're typically accustomed to using, and of course, there are solid lubricants. Now, there is actually kind of a fourth type, which we would call the cohesive lubricants or greases, and they kind of exhibit this semi-solid behavior. Now, solid lubricants can be used in a number of different ways because sometimes they're used as additives, either in liquid lubricants or greases, and sometimes they're used on their own. So what's the primary way that they function? Well, most of them are what we call lamellar solid materials. And that means that they have these kind of atomically thin planes that are quite strong and well held together, but the actual forces between those planes are very weak. And that means that they can slide over each other really well. This is kind of like uh, if I were running on a set of playing cards, then in a kind of wily e. coyote style, they would slip underneath me and I wouldn't go anywhere. If we think about actual solid lubricants in something like a bearing, which is a pretty simple system, right? It's basically a shaft within a hollow shaft. As that turns, how could a solid material help us? Well, if you look at something like the load zone and you were to zoom in on it a little bit, having these plates that are able to slide against each other with very, very low friction right, is of benefit because as that inner diameter rotates, what you get is those planes sliding over each other. And that low shear strength is actually a really good property to have. And so that's fundamentally how these solid lubricants work. So how would you choose what kind of solid lubricant you want to use? Graphite, for example, is really good because it has very low friction, as in the case of pencil lead. What's interesting about this pure form of carbon is that it actually needs a passive layer. So it has lower frictional properties in the presence of water. That makes it limited in things like vacuum and space applications. So as an example, if you did pin on disk measurements, you might typically get a coefficient of friction of around sort of 0.4. But if you add a bit of humidity to the air, sometimes that can reduce down to something like 0.2. The other thing about graphite is that it is highly conductive as well. Water actually has the reverse effect on moly, which is a very common additive that gives some greases that sort of grayish color. What water actually does is it reacts with the molybdenum disulfide molecules and it increases the shear strength between the layers and therefore increases the coefficient of friction. Now, moly has the advantage of being quite oxidatively stable and it performs really well in high pressure conditions. And that's why it's so popular. One of the limitations though of moly, aside from that exposure to water, is that it does kind of cap out at a temperature of about 400 degrees. So in some really high temperature, things like furnace applications, sometimes moly has a, a bit of a higher temperature limit. That's where we might turn to something like boron nitride. Boron nitride is really good because it has a low coefficient of friction and it's also really resistant to thermal shock. So in very high temperature applications, maybe that's something that we want to use. In some cases, the solid lubricants will be deposited on surfaces, like a kind of a sputtering action, where we deposit them and we form a solid film. This would be very much the case in, say, for example, the space industry, where liquid lubricants don't really make a whole lot of sense because they would boil off in the vacuum of space. So what they do at NASA and presumably at places like SpaceX is that they use a, a sort of a sputtering mechanism to, let's say, for example, use moly or graphite or boron nitride and sputter it onto the surface for, so it forms a solid lubricant film. But typically in the industrial, we're used to seeing it used in either liquid lubricants or as additives in greases. Now, in liquid lubricants, you don't tend to see them all that much because they can be filtered out by really fine filtration. But it's very, very common in greases, especially those which are catered towards kind of high temperature or very, very high load conditions. Molly, for example, is very easily combined in with a grease. That's the basics of solid lubricants. We obviously haven't covered everything. PTFE, for example, operates on a completely different principle to those lamellar solid materials. And we haven't covered things like tungsten disulfide or some of the newer graphene or even titanium materials.
So we'll have to cover those in specific videos that we develop for this channel.